Hello everyone, hope you all are doing good. I am Anjana from LearnoHub, the free learning platform where you can study math, science and SST absolutely free at LearnoHub.com. In today's class, we are going to discuss ICSE class 9, physics chapter 4, pressure in fluids and atmospheric pressure. We will be discussing the topic atmospheric pressure and solve questions from exercise 4B. Are you ready for the session? Let's begin. We will start today's class with a simple question. Why do mountains bleed at high altitude? Have you heard this? Yes, this is something that is related to atmospheric pressure. So, we will be understanding the concepts of atmospheric pressure and I will explain you what is the reason behind this. We will start with a simple experiment to understand atmospheric pressure. So, here you can see I am holding a balloon. Now, what happens when I leave this? I have not tied. When I leave, what happens? When I loosen my hands, what happens? You can see that the air is escaping out. Okay, the air is escaping out from the balloon. Why is it happening? You can see that the size of the balloon is also decreasing. So, why is this happening? Because there is a difference in pressure. Okay, so when you compare the air inside the balloon and outside the balloon, the air which is inside the balloon is at a high pressure. Okay, there is high pressure. And the air outside the balloon is at low pressure. So, the air start flowing from the high pressure region to a low pressure region. This is why the air can escape out from a balloon. So, understood? So, this is related to atmospheric pressure. Okay. So, in some time you will be able to see that there is no air left inside the balloon. It will just completely get escaped out. Okay. You can see the size of balloon is decreasing, decreasing and finally what happens? There will not be any air that is left inside the balloon. Okay. You can see this. Initially, the size was the balloon. The balloon was a bigger balloon. Now, it has reduced to a very small size. Okay. You can see, by now, there is no air that is left inside the balloon. Okay. So, here, the earth is surrounded by air up to a height of about 300 kilometer. Okay. So, there are different layers. These layers are called the, together called the atmosphere. So, earth has its atmosphere. Now, these layers of air that is surrounding the earth will be exerting a thrust on the surface of earth. Okay, so we know that thrust on area is pressure. This pressure that is exerted by the air column around the earth's surface is called pressure. Okay, per unit area. So, we can define pressure, atmospheric pressure that is a thrust exerted per unit area on the earth's surface due to column of air is called atmospheric pressure on the surface of earth. Okay. So, you can see that there is an envelope that is surrounding the earth. Okay. So, this is earth. This envelope that is surrounding the earth is called the atmosphere. Now, the density of atmospheric air near the surface of earth is greater and it decreases as we go up. So, here you can see there are many layers. If you are taking four layers, okay, this is the first layer, this is the second layer, there is another layer, that is the third layer, then the fourth layer, okay. So, the earth that is at the center and the first envelope, okay. So, first layer density will be greater than the second layer's density. It will be greater than third layer's density. It will be greater than the fourth layer's density. That is density of air surrounding the earth will decrease when the distance also distance increases. Okay. Hence, atmospheric pressure decreases as we go up. So, atmospheric pressure and the layer's distance from the earth's surface are directly proportional. That is, so Hence, atmospheric pressure decreases as we go up. As we go up, what happens? The distance is increasing and then the atmospheric pressure will be decreasing. Okay, because the density is decreasing. Density of air is decreasing. Now, let us understand some common consequences of atmospheric pressure. Sucking a drink with a straw. So, here I have a straw. With this straw, I am able to drink water that is inside the glass. We know every body, every sub object is attracted by earth. There is gravity. So, nothing can move upwards unless a force is exerted. Yes. So, here what I am going to do is I am going to suck the water inside. So, what happens? The water is rising up through the straw. 
So why is it happening? Now here, when you suck the air, initially there is only air inside the straw. So first you will be sucking the air that is inside the straw. So what happens then when you compare the air, this air will go to your lungs. Okay. So when you compare the air inside the straw is at a low pressure and the air outside the straw is at high pressure. So we know that when this straw is inside the liquid, so this liquid will be start to move through the straw upwards. Why? Because here you can see the atmosphere is exerting a pressure in this direction. Okay. Atmosphere is exerting pressure. So we know that the fluids will have a tendency to move from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. So this is a high pressure region and this is a low pressure region. So because of this, we are able to suck the water that is inside the glass. Okay, so this is the first consequence. When a drink is sucked with a straw, first the air in the straw goes into our lungs, due to which air pressure inside the straw decreases. When the air pressure inside the straw decreases, when you compare, you will be able to see that the atmospheric pressure is greater than the air that is inside the straw, which is at a low pressure. Okay, now the liquid will have a tendency to move from a high pressure region to low pressure region and you are able to suck the water that is inside the glass. Okay, second consequence filling a syringe with the liquid. So here you can see this is a syringe. This liquid should be filled inside the syringe. Syringe has two parts. This is the plunger and this is the barrel. Okay, first the plunger. Here the liquid is kept at this point. Now the plunger is lower to the base. Okay, it will reach till here. Then what happens is when it is pulled backward, you will be able to see that a vacuum is created. Okay, a vacuum is created. So, on comparing, the air inside the syringe will be at a lower pressure. That is, uh, compared to the atmospheric pressure. Okay, now this liquid will have a tendency to move from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. Therefore, it starts flowing inside the syringe. Okay, the syringe is kept with its opening just inside liquid and the plunger is lower till its base. Now when the plunger is pulled up in the barrel, there is no air inside and thus the pressure inside the barrel below the plunger is much less than the atmospheric pressure acting on the liquid surface. Okay, so this is a reason how a liquid can be filled inside a syringe. Third one, filling of ink into a fountain pen. So, have you used this fountain pen? In the fountain pen, there is a rubber tube. This is a rubber tube. Okay. So, when you press the rubber tube, what happens is the air inside will escape out. You can, you will be able to see bubbles. Okay. Now, the snip is kept touching the ink bottle, ink. Okay. Then, what happens is when you press it again, all the air has escaped out. Now, there is a vacuum created. So, on comparing, you will be able to see that the atmospheric pressure is greater than the pressure, the air pressure that is inside this rubber tube. Okay. Now, the liquid or the fluid here, that is the ink will have a tendency to move from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. This is how the ink gets inside a fountain pen. Okay, as a syringe is filled with the liquid due to the atmospheric pressure, ink also gets in filled into a fountain pen. The same phenomenon that is, it is an application of atmospheric pressure. Next is the action of rubber suckers. These rubber suckers are used as hooks in kitchen and bathrooms and all. So here what happens is, this is a wall. Here a rubber sucker, when it is pressed on the wall, what happens is the air here will escape out. Air in between the sucker and the wall will escape out. Then, the, then a vacuum is created. Okay, here a vacuum is created. Now when you compare, the atmospheric pressure is greater than the pressure at this region. Which means, the due to the atmospheric pressure, the air here will push it. Okay, it will be exerting a force which will press the sucker on the wall. Okay, all the air has escaped out when you press it and this atmospheric pressure due to the atmospheric pressure it can be held at this held at the wall. Okay, one thing to remember is the wall should be smooth. If there is some this is if this is a rough surface then there will be gaps. If there is gaps air can enter inside and you cannot stick the rubber sucker over the wall. Okay. Fifth one is the action of siphon system. So here you can see two vessels are taken. Let's name them as P and Q. Okay, you have to transfer water from or any liquid from P 
P to Q, vessel P to vessel Q. For this, you will be using a tube. This can be a glass tube or a rubber tube, which is kept inserted. One end is kept inserted inside the vessel P. Vessel P contains some liquid. That is, let us say, the vessel P contains water. Okay. So here, the other end is kept in vessel Q. Now we are going to transfer the water from here to here. We know that there should be a pressure difference for the liquid or any fluid to flow. There should be a pressure difference. So we are going to create a pressure difference. Here you can see that both the vessels, when you compare, you can see they are at different heights. Okay, they are kept at different heights. This is at a upper height and this is at a lower height. Okay, now what happens is all the air that is inside the tube is sucked out, which means pressure inside the tube will be less than the pressure, outside pressure, that is atmospheric pressure. Due to this reason, what happens? The liquid, let's say this is point A, okay? The liquid at point A here, atmospheric pressure will be acting. Due to the atmospheric pressure being greater than the pressure inside the tube, what happens? The liquid have a tendency to flow from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure, okay? So the liquid will start getting inside the tube. It reaches the maximum height. So here at point C, it reaches, okay? Now here we have B. From the C, what happens? Now it has reached this point. From there, it flows down. Okay, it flows down and reaches the vessel B. Okay, now in this way, you will be able to transfer the liquid from A to B only if there is a pressure difference. Now consider that both the vessels are held at the same height. Will the liquid flow? Let's say both are held at the same height. Only if there is a difference in pressure, we know pressure depends upon the depth, height, density and acceleration due to gravity. Okay, if there is no pressure difference, there cannot be any flow of liquid. Okay, pressure that is exerted by the atmosphere should be greater than the pressure inside the tube. Only then what happens, the liquid be able to flow. So, this is the action of hyphen system. Water is supplied from a higher level to a lower level using a siphon system. Why siphon system is used? This is the reason. Next is taking out oil from a sealed can. So, a completely filled or sealed can. Okay, when you consider there is no air inside, you are making a hole in it. Will the oil be able to flow out? So, here you will be able to see that the oil will be exerting a pressure on the walls of the container. Okay, on the walls of the can, the oil will be exerting a pressure. But here, the atmospheric pressure will be greater. Since atmospheric rate, uh, pressure is greater, the oil cannot flow out of this can. So, for this, to bring the oil out of the can, what can be done is, you can make another hole, okay, in the opposite side. So, here you can see the can is tilted, okay. Now, another hole is made in the opposite side. Then what happens when a hole is made, air will enter. Okay, so due to the oil column and due to the air inside, the pressure will become. So here there are two pressure, one due to the pressure due to the oil column and the pressure due to the air inside the can. These two pressures together will become greater than the atmospheric pressure. Okay, when it becomes greater than the atmospheric pressure, the fluid will have a tendency to flow from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. That is the oil will be able to come out now. Okay, so this is how we can take out oil from a completely filled and sealed can, okay? It is difficult to take out oil from a completely filled and sealed can by making a hole, single hole in it. So, for that, what we will do is we are going to make two holes in the opposite direction. Another hole is made in the opposite direction, just opposite to the first hole, okay? Now, how to measure the atmospheric pressure? We know that temperature can be measured using a thermometer. So, there are different devices or different equipments to measure different quantity. So, here in order to measure atmospheric pressure, the device used is called a barometer. There are different types of barometer. First is a simple barometer, then photons barometer and aneroid barometer. So, we will be discussing in detail about these barometers. So, what is barometer? A barometer is an instrument which is used to measure the atmospheric pressure. In simple words, to measure atmospheric pressure, barometer is used. Okay. First, we will discuss about simple barometer. Simple barometer was, was designed by Torricelli in the year 1643. So, here in a simple barometer, mercury was used as a barometric liquid. You can see that in case of a thermometer, the reading is given by mercury. There is a rise and fall in the level of mercury inside the tube. So, here again mercury is used as a barometric liquid. So, this is how a simple barometer looks like. First, he took a glass tube which is of height about 1 meter, okay. This glass tube was taken 
you know, in a tube, one end is closed and the other end is open. He filled it completely with mercury. Okay, filling with mercury, one thing to notice that there is no air bubbles. For that, he kept the other end closed with his thumb and several times he made it upside down. So, here by doing so, you can remove all that is all the air can be forced out. If there is any air, it can be forced out. Next, he took a mercury trough. Now, the glass tube which is filled completely with mercury is kept inverted inside this mercury trough. Then what happens is when you keep it inverted inside the mercury trough, the level of mercury in the tube will fall. Okay, it will fall till a height that is 76 millimeter. So when you measure at 76 millimeter is where the mercury level will be 76 millimeter or 0 0.76 meters or 76 centimeters. Okay, this is when the pressure inside will become equal to the atmospheric pressure. Okay, so we have reached the atmospheric pressure. Okay, so here the reading will be 76 centimeter. Conditions of temperature and the pressure at sea level is maintained. Now you will be able to measure the atmospheric pressure. This is a normal atmospheric pressure. Okay, the atmospheric pressure is read when the level of mercury inside a simple barometer is 76 centimeter, 0 0.76 meter or 760 millimeter. Okay. Now the working of a simple barometer. So here this is how a simple barometer looks like. We have said this before. Consider point C. Here we have A and B. Okay. Now there will be a pressure due to the due to this AB. That is this mercury column AB will be exerting a pressure at point A. Okay, there is atmospheric pressure at C. At all the points there will be atmospheric pressure. So, here you will be able to read 76 centimeter when the pressure at A becomes equal to the pressure at C. Okay, now what happens is if the atmospheric pressure increases, we have to read the atmospheric pressure. When atmospheric pressure increases, which means the pressure at C will be increasing. Okay, pressure at C will be increasing. When the pressure at C increases on comparison inside the tube and outside the tube, outside tube, outside the tube, the pressure will be, atmospheric pressure is higher than the pressure inside the tube. In that case, what happens? The liquid will start flowing from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. That is, the liquid starts getting inside the tube. Then what happens to the mercury level? The mercury level inside the tube will rise. So, when atmospheric pressure increases inside the tube, the mercury level will increase. Okay. Now, when the atmospheric pressure decreases, what happens? When atmospheric pressure decreases, on comparing, the pressure inside the tube is greater than the pressure outside, which means the liquid will flow out of the tube. When liquid flows out of the tube, here it will be rising. Okay. That is, the mercury level inside the tube will fall. So, this height is called the vertical height. This vertical height is called the barometric height. Okay, now there is an empty space over here. This is called torricellian vacuum. Okay, this is torricellian vacuum. Okay, the vertical height of mercury column from the mercury surface in the trough to the level in the tube is a measure of atmospheric pressure. This will help us to measure the atmospheric pressure. Okay. Barometric height at normal temperature and pressure. By now we have understood what is barometric height. That is the level of mercury inside the glass tube. Okay. Now at normal temperature and pressure at sea level, the barometric height we have already said is equal to 0 0.76 meters, 76 centimeter or 760 millimeters of mercury. Okay. This is the level of mercury. It is not just you can say that the barometric height is 76 centimeters. It is 76 centimeters of mercury or 760 millimeters of mercury or 0 0.76 meters of mercury. Okay, you have to mention the mercury there. Okay. What are the factors affecting the barometric height? The barometric height at a place changes only when the atmospheric pressure changes because we are measuring using a barometer, we are measuring the atmospheric pressure. So, only when atmospheric pressure changes, the barometric height changes. Okay. Now, if you take a barometer, if the shape of the tube or the size of the tube or the length that is submerged inside the mercury trough changes or if this tube is tilted, in all these cases, the reading that we get will be accurate. Okay, now here we know this is torricellian vacuum. This vacuum 
here if some air enters or some water enters immediately it will get converted into vapor okay once it gets converted into vapor there will be vapor pressure pressure will be exerted okay when pressure is exerted what happens the barometric height will be decreasing okay which means you won't be getting the accurate results okay that is why first of all we have mentioned one thing the mercury should be completely filled with mercury there should be no air bubbles once air enters or water enters it gets converted into vapor okay this vapor will exert a vapor pressure due to this pressure what happens the barometric height will be decreasing that is from when you compare the atmospheric pressure value that you will be getting in this barometer will be less than the actual value okay this is then called a faulty barometer so no we cannot continue using this barometer anymore because here there is vapor pressure as well it is not just the atmospheric pressure that we are getting because of the vapor pressure the reading is decreasing okay you will be getting a wrong value you cannot use this faulty barometer for making the atmospheric pressure measurement we have said that mercury is used as a barometric liquid why mercury why not water so what are the advantages of using mercury as a barometric liquid a barometer can be made by using any liquid but mercury is preferred for the following reason the first one is the density of mercury is greater than that of any liquid we know pressure atmospheric pressure what, what is pressure pressure depends on three factors density depth and acceleration due to gravity okay so here density is playing an important role okay height is playing an important role and acceleration due to gravity is also playing an important role so when you take the density of a liquid okay density of mercury is greater okay density of mercury is greater its value is 13.6 into 10 raised to 3 kilogram per meter cube okay for water it is 1000 kilogram per meter cube so when you compare you will understand that the density of mercury is greater okay and it will help us help to give a accurate result the second point is the vapor pressure of mercury is negligible so we know that there is a torricellian vacuum over here okay so here the vapor pressure we know that the vapor pressure of water the vapor pressure will be greater due to this reason we call it a faulty barometer you cannot use it anymore because it is exerting a pressure and the barometer barometric height will be low the liquid will fall okay so you cannot use that case but when you take the case of mercury since the vapor pressure of mercury is negligible you will be getting accurate results this is the second point third is the mercury neither wets nor sticks to the glass tube so consider if the if during its movement that is if the atmospheric pressure changes and the liquid should rise let's say some uh, some liquid will get stuck to this tube okay if it gets stuck to the tube and when the pressure decreases you are taking a reading so some liquid will be stuck somewhere here will you be able to get the correct result then no right so you have to use a liquid that doesn't stick to the glass tube that you are using so this is a third point now fourth one that surface area of mercury is shining and opaque so what is the advantages of using a liquid that is having a surface area which is shining and opaque so by using if you are using water water is transparent you won't be able to get a proper read you won't be able to read it properly but since you can see that in case of mercury it is shining and it is opaque you will be able to see the reading for example when you take a thermometer you can see the movement of mercury inside the tube yes similarly in a barometer also by using mercury you will be able to see the movement of the liquid next the fifth one it can easily be obtained in a pure state so obtaining a liquid in a pure state is a difficult thing so here obtaining mercury is not that difficult so these are the five important points that you have to remember why mercury is used as a barometric liquid and not any other liquids now disadvantages of using water as a barometric liquid we know the density of water is equal to 10 raised to 3 kilogram per meter cube what was the density of mercury density of mercury is equal to 13.6 into 10 raised to 3 kilogram per meter cube so when you compare you will be able to understand the density of mercury is greater than the density of water okay now the first point is the density of water is low okay we know that pressure depends on height density and acceleration due to gravity okay so here let us calculate the height 
height will be equal to pressure divided by rho into g. Atmospheric pressure value is 10 raised to 5 newton per meter square or pascals. Okay, 10 raised to 5 divided by here, 10 raised to 3 into acceleration due to gravity 9.8. So, when you calculate approximately you will be getting 10.4 meters. Okay, now in case of mercury, again P is equal to H rho G, H is equal to P by rho G, 10 raised to 5 is the atmospheric pressure, 10 raised to 5 pascals. Here the density is 13.6 into 10 raised to 3 into 9.8. So when you calculate, you will be getting this value approximately 0 0.76 meters. Okay. Now when you compare, here you are getting 10.4 meters and here you are getting 0 0.76 meters. So by using mercury, if you are taking a tube of 1 meter, 1 meter length 2 tube if you are taking, you will be able to measure the atmospheric pressure because it is only 0 0.76 meter. The barometric height is only 0 0.76 meter. So when you take the case of uh, water, you can see it is 10.4 meter, which means a tube that you are taking should have a reading 10.4 meter. Just imagine uh, it is greater than 10 times the tube that you will be using in case of a mercury. Okay, so it is in one inconvenient to get a tube that can measure 10.4 meter. That is the height of the tube should be greater than 10.4 meter. This is the first reason why you cannot use water as a barometric liquid. Second one, the vapor pressure of water is high. What happens when vapor pressure vapors will be formed? The, uh, the vapors will be exerting pressure. When vapors exert pressure, the reading that is the barometric height will decrease. The liquid will fall. Okay, which means you will be getting a result that is different from the actual atmospheric pressure that is to be measured. Second point. Now the third point, water sticks with the glass tube and wets it. So when water sticks to the glass tube, then what happens? You won't be getting accurate result. The reading will vary. Okay. Fourth one, water is transparent. So its surface is not easily seen while taking the observations. So when you compare it with mercury, in case of mercury, you are having the liquid that is the surface of the liquid. It is opaque and it is shiny. So in case of water, it is transparent which means the movement of water you won't be able to read properly okay just imagine if in case of thermometer instead of mercury you had water you won't be able to read it because it is transparent demerits of simple barometer so we have understood in detail about simple barometer its constructions and working okay why simple barometer is not preferred much what are the demerits of simple barometer first point there is no protection for the glass tube so here you can see this glass tube is exposed okay so in any time there are chances for it getting damaged. This is the first reason. Second, the surface of mercury in the trough is open. Therefore, there are chances that the impurities may fall in and get the mercury of the trough. Okay. So, here you can see this is the mercury in, inside the trough. It is kept open which means the impurities can fall. So, when impurities fall, you will be able to see there will be difficulties for some time, the liquid to get inside the tube. Even if it gets, you will be getting different reading. The re reading may change because there are impurities as well. Okay. Third, it is inconvenient to move the barometer from one place to another. So, here this setup. Okay. Here you have a glass tube. You have a mercury trough. To move it from one place to another, it is all. It is very difficult. Okay. So, because you have the glass tube, it is made up of glass. So, getting damaged, may get damaged. So, these reasons, due to this reasons, movement of it is not that portable. Fourth point, a scale cannot be fixed with the tube to measure the atmospheric pressure because here the atmospheric pressure is changing. So, when atmospheric pressure changes, the level of mercury in the trough will also be changing. So, if you are setting a zero scale, there will be variation. That is always the liquid won't be coinciding here. The liquid won't be coinciding with the zero scale. There will be changes. Okay, because of this reason, you cannot use a fixed scale. So, in, this, uh, in detail, we have discussed about the demerits of simple barometer. When there are some demerits, a modified version will be developed. So, here a modified form of simple barometer is a 14 barometer. In a 14 barometer, this 14 barometer is used to measure atmospheric pressure in laboratories. So, in detail, we will discuss about the working, the measurement and the constructions of 14 barometers. So, this is how a 14 barometer looks like. So, here you are able to see there is a brass case. Okay, so we have said that the first disadvantage of or a demerit of simple barometer was that it is kept 
unclosed okay it is not closed that is a glass tube is exposed so here a brass case is given for protection it is not protected so this is protected okay first disadvantage has been recovered with this 14 parameter now here you can see these are the main parts there is a brass case then the mercury now is kept inside the leather cup okay there in that case you, it is not portable but here there is a hook and it is portable now here uh, 85 centimeter to 90 centimeter tube is used okay now this mercury it is inside the leather cup therefore the movement is also not very difficult then you have a thermometer inside to measure the temperature the room temperature can be measured this is where the mercury flows inside the tube then you have a vernier scale and the main scale so reading can be taken using this scale and accurate reading you will be able to get there is a screw which is which helps us to adjust the mercury level so here we have an ivory ivory pointer so this is where the level of mercury should be so while taking the reading so while taking the reading the screw is adjusted and the leather cup is adjusted so that the ivory point touches the level of mercury okay and the reading in the main scale and the vernier scale so this is the main scale here you have the vernier scale all these readings can be noted it can be noted and the correct value you will be able to get so all the demerits you have to remember of the simple barometer for a simple barometer there are those four demerits all these demerits that is here we have a scale it is portable then the other that is it is protected all these disadvantages of the simple barometer has been solved when a photer barometer has been used now the third type of barometer is an aneroid barometer so here comparing to a simple barometer or 14 barometer this is more advantage there are many advantages of an aneroid barometer first one is this barometer has no liquid so we have said that if in case of a simple barometer or a 14 barometer we are using mercury as a liquid here no liquid is used second point is it is light and portable so we have seen comparing it to we have seen that 14 barometer is also portable so here this is lightweight and it is easily portable third it is calibrated to read directly the atmospheric pressure no adjustment is needed in this case okay in case of 14 uh, barometer we had to first adjust using the screw we have to first adjust the level of mercury in the leather cup so here it is not necessary any adjustment is not needed okay so this is how a aneroid barometer looks like this is the actual thing that is the outer thing so here inside how it is look how how it looks like okay so there is a metal cup okay so here this cup is evacuated at the center this part d you can see this d is at the center there is a this is springy then a road let a road l is placed inside it okay now when the atmospheric pressure increases what happens is you can see tooths here and a wheel is set here okay when the atmospheric pressure increases this diaphragm it will move down it, we said as we said here that it is springy and it will move down so when it moves down this wheel starts rotating in the clockwise direction okay so when this wheel starts rotating in clockwise direction the pointer will move towards the right and will be able to measure the atmospheric pressure so here we are given we know that atmospheric pressure is this is given in centimeters okay circular scale the measurement is in centimeters so 76 centimeters of mercury this is normal so here it is at 77 which means the atmospheric pressure has increased it has moved towards the right it has moved towards the right because here this wheel is rotating in the clockwise direction clockwise rotation happens when the road moves down okay now if the atmospheric pressure decreases then what happens the measurement should be made which means here it should go below the actual value that is 76 it should go below that which means here what happens the diaphragm will move up okay due to the spring action the diaphragm will move up when the diaphragm moves up the wheel will rotate in the opposite direction which means in the anti-clockwise direction when it rotates in the anti-clockwise direction the pointer the needle will move towards the left okay in this way we'll be able to take the reading in an aneroid barometer so comparing with simple and uh, for uh, four, 14 barometer aneroid barometer is more useful use of barometer first to measure the atmospheric pressure at a place so we have studied how to measure the atmospheric pressure second it is used for weather forecasting we'll be discussing about this in detail next is as an altimeter to measure the height it is in case of aircrafts to measure altitude uh, as an altimeter you can use a barometer that is the 
Aneroid barometer can be used in this case. So these are the important uses of a barometer where barometer is used. Next is the variation of atmospheric pressure with altitudes. The atmospheric pressure decreases with altitude mainly due to the following two reasons. So here the first reason is decrease in height of air column which causes a linear decrease in the atmospheric pressure. So here this is the earth surface. Above the earth surface there are many layers of air. Okay. So when this we are considering this is the first layer which means the second and third layers will be exerting a force about it. Okay. A force is exerted on it. This force is acting perpendicular. This is a thrust. Due to the thrust acting on an area, there is a pressure. Okay. There is a pressure. So, when this height increases, so when you are moving to a greater height, so what happens? The pressure, the number of layers is decreasing. When number of layers is decreasing, the force is decreasing. Thrust is decreasing. Pressure is decreasing. So, when the altitude increases, what is happening to pressure? Atmospheric pressure is decreasing. That is, there is a linear decrease in atmospheric pressure with increasing height. So, this is the first point. Now, the second is decrease in density of air which causes a non-linear decrease in the atmospheric pressure. Here it is non-linear. Okay, let's see. Now, when the heights increases, you can see that the number of, when the number of layers is greater. So, when you consider the first layer, the second, third, fourth, etc. will be exerting a pressure. Okay, which means here the pressure is greater, the weight is greater, which means the density will be higher. So, when you go to the higher levels, higher layers, what happens? The density is decreasing. Okay, higher layers, the density is decreasing. So, when density decreases with increase in height, density is decreasing. When density decreases, what happens to atmospheric pressure? Atmo the pressure is also decreasing. Atmospheric pressure is also decreasing. decreases. We know P is equal to H rho G. So, when density decreases, atmospheric pressure, they are directly proportional. The atmospheric pressure also decreases. So, when you plot a graph with height from sea level taken on the x-axis and the atmospheric pressure taken on y-axis you will be able to see this is how the graph is. When the height increases, when the altitude increases, what is happening to atmospheric pressure? The atmospheric pressure is decreasing which means initially there is a rapid decrease but then it becomes gradual. Then later there is no decrease at all. So, this is how it happens. It is not a straight line. This type of a curve you will be getting. So, it shows initially there is a rapid decrease. Okay. Then it becomes lower. Yeah. So, these are the two important points to remember for the variation of atmospheric pressure with altitude. Now, what are the consequences of this? So, here first that's by the, at the beginning of this chapter we have discussed one thing. Why does the mountaineers bleed at high altitudes? What is the reason? So, now we will be explaining with this because we have understood all the concepts of atmospheric pressure. Okay. The first consequence is at high altitude, since the atmospheric pressure is less, breathing becomes difficult and not bleeding may occur due to excess of pressure of blood over the atmospheric pressure. So, we know that when altitude increases, what is happening? The atmospheric pressure is decreasing. So, atmospheric pressure decreases. Okay, when atmospheric pressure decreases, what happens? The blood pressure will become greater. Okay, the blood pressure will become very higher. That is, the pressure difference will be very high. Due to this reason, the fluid that is inside the body here, blood will have a tendency to flow from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. Okay, when you go to greater heights, what is happening? The atmospheric pressure becomes that low. Okay, atmospheric pressure becomes low on comparison. The blood pressure is very high. Blood will have a tendency to move from a region of higher to lower pressure. Okay, and because of this, what happens? The blood will start flowing out through the nose. Okay, therefore, high blood pressure patients are not advised to go to hill stations or higher altitudes because they won't be able to survive over there. The blood will start flowing out of their body. Now, the second consequence at high altitudes, a fountain pen leaks. So, here what is happening inside a fountain pen, we know there is a rubber tube. Inside the rubber tube, there will be some air. Okay. At the earth surface, on the surface of earth, you can see that the air pressure and the outside pressure, that is atmospheric pressure will be equal. So, when you go to higher altitudes, what is happening to atmospheric pressure? Atmospheric pressure is decreasing. Still then, the 
pressure inside the air pressure inside the rubber tube will be the same it is not going to change so when you compare you will be able to see that the air pressure inside the tube is greater than the outside pressure outside atmospheric pressure so now the fluid inside will have a tendency to flow from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure so it starts leaking it will start flowing from the pen outside okay because of the variation in pressure so this is how the fountain pen leaks at a higher altitudes so we have said that barometer is used in weather forecast how does barometer helps in weather forecast so we know that the when the temperature changes or the water vapor content in the atmosphere the moisture content in the atmosphere changes what happens to density of air density of air also changes with the increase in temperature or increase in water vapor what happens is the density of the air will decrease when density decreases what happens to atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure also decreases so here when atmospheric pressure decreases what happens the barometric height will change okay so when the atmospheric pressure decreases the barometric height can fall the reading will change so just by taking this reading you will be able to predict what the climate or what the weather will be okay so the, it is help this is how it helps in the weather forecast so first point if the barometric height at a place suddenly falls what does it mean it means that the pressure at that place has suddenly decreased which indicates the coming of a storm or cyclone so here the when does the barometric height at a place suddenly fall what is happening there is a sudden decrease in the atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure decreases when does atmospheric pressure decreases when the density of air has suddenly decreased density of air decreases due to two reasons one is the increase in temperature or increase in the moisture content when the moisture content suddenly increases what happens there are chances of storm or cyclone so first point second is if the barometric height gradually falls this is a sudden fall here if it is if it is falls gradually it indicates that the moisture or in air is increasing okay so moisture increase because of moisture increase there is a gradual fall in the barometric height that is atmospheric pressure is decreasing this indicates possibility of rain when does rain come the moisture content has increased in the atmosphere okay so we can predict there are chances of rain when the barometric height is falling gradually okay sudden fall this is gradual fall next is a gradual increase in the barometric height means that the moisture in air is decreasing when moisture in air decreases there are chances of a dry climate we can predict that the weather is going to be a dry weather okay fourth one a sudden rise in the barometric height when does barometric height rise atmospheric pressure has increased means the flow of air from that place to other surrounding low pressure areas we know that when the barometric height increases only when the atmospheric pressure has increased which means when the atmospheric pressure increases the air over there will have a tendency to flow from that region to a low pressure region okay this indicates the coming of a extremely dry climate this is a chance of extremely dry climate we can predict that there are chances of extremely dry climate okay that is sudden rise in the barometric height sudden fall in the uh, barometric height means it is there are chances of cyclone or storm when there is a sudden rise there is a chance of extremely dry climate okay if it is a gradual rise in the barometric height then what is the chance a dry climate chance if it is a gradual fall gradual fall in the barometric height then it is chances of rain next the fifth one if there is no abrupt change in barometric that is barometric height is being maintained at the same level that is 0.76 meters of mercury the barometric height is remaining the same okay it indicates that the atmospheric atmosphere is normal the weather will remain unchanged so we can make weather predictions okay so this is how using a barometer the weather, weather prediction is being done next use of barometer is in a altimeter altimeter is nothing but it is like uh, an anaerobic barometer which is used in an aircraft it is used to measure not the atmospheric pressure but it is to measure the altitude so this is how it looks like so here you know that when the altitude increases atmospheric pressure will be decreasing so with this decreasing atmospheric pressure there will be a towards the left there will be an increase okay so here the needle will starts moving towards the left from which we can take the reading and we can able we will be able to measure the altitude at what height the person is can be measured okay so this is how an aerobic an aeroid barometer helps in the measurement of altitude in an aircraft 
Let us take an example. The atmospheric pressure at a place is 75 centimeter of mercury. What does it mean? Express it in Newton per meter square. Newton per meter square is the unit of pressure or pascals. Use density of mercury 13.6 gram per centimeter cube. G is equal to 9.8 meter per second square. So here we are given the height. H is equal to 75 centimeters of mercury which is equal to 0 0.75 meters of mercury okay next density is given density rho is equal to 13.6 gram per centimeter cube we know that 1 kilogram is equal to 1000 grams which means 1 gram will be equal to 1 by 1000 kilogram okay then 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter. 1 centimeter will be 1 by 100 meters. Which means we have centimeter cube. So 1 centimeter cube will be equal to 1 by 100 into 100 into 100. Okay. 100 cube meter cube which is 1 by 10 raised to 6 meter cube. Now we will have to convert this. This is equal to 13.6 into 1 gram is 1 by 1000 kilogram. Okay. Kilogram divided by 1000. Okay. Divided by. Here we have centimeter cube. What is centimeter cube? 1 by 10 raised to 6 meter cube. Okay. Which is equal to 13.6 kilogram per 1000 into Taking the reciprocal and multiplying 10 raised to 6 divided by meter cube which is equal to 13.6. Three zeros can be cancelled then the power becomes 3. 10 raised to 3 kilogram per meter cube. So this is the density of mercury. 13.6 into 10 raised to 3 kilogram per meter cube. Okay, We now also know the acceleration due to gravity 9.8 meter per second square. We can find what the pressure is. How to find pressure? Pressure P is equal to H rho G. Put the values. H is equal to 0 0.75. Rho is equal to 13.6 into 10 raised to 3. Acceleration due to gravity 9.8. So when you calculate, you will be getting 9.996 into 10 raised to 4 Newton per meter square. So this is the atmospheric pressure. Okay, if you know this formula, if you know the values of the depth or height, density and acceleration due to gravity, just you have to substitute to get the atmospheric pressure. Second example, the upper blood pressure of a patient is 160 centimeter of Hg, whereas the normal blood pressure should be 120 centimeters of mercury. Calculate the extra pressure generated by the heart in SI units. Take the density of mercury 13,600 kilogram per meter cube and acceleration due to gravity 9.8 meter per second square. So here we need to first find the extra pressure. What is the extra pressure? Extra pressure in centimeters of mercury. How much do we get? 160 centimeter of mercury minus 120 centimeter of mercury which is equal to 40 centimeters of mercury in meters it will be equal to 0 0.4 meters of mercury so this is the extra pressure so next we have to convert it into the si units so when you take the height height will be equal to 0 0.4 okay next what about the density rho is equal to 13600 kilogram per meter cube and acceleration due to gravity is equal to 9.8 meter per second square. Now we can substitute in the formula P is equal to H rho G. Okay. Which means P is equal to 0 0.4 into 13600 into 9.8. So when you calculate this you will be getting 5.3312 into 10 raised to 4 unit is pascals pascals is si unit or newton per meter square okay so this is how you find the pressure here it is directly given this is also equal to 13.6 into 10 raised to 3 okay here it is given as 13600 
kilogram per meter cube. If it is given in gram per centimeter cube, then you will have to convert it into kilogram per meter cube. Now let us solve numericals from exercise 4b. Question 1 of exercise 4b. Convert 1 millimeters of mercury into pascal. Take density of mercury 13.6 into 10 raised to 3 kilogram per meter cube and g is equal to 9.8 meter per second square. So here we have to convert 1 millimeters of mercury into pascals. So here what is the height? Height is equal to 1 millimeters. Density is equal to 13.6 into 10 raised to 3 kilogram per meter cube and g is equal to 9.8 meter per second square. So here you can see that this is in units is millimeters. First we have to convert it into meters. What is 1 meter? 1 meter is equal to 1000 millimeters which means 1 millimeter is 1 by 1000 meters. Okay, 1 by 1000 meters that is equal to 10 raised to minus 3 meters. Now we can calculate the pressure. Pressure is equal to H rho G that is 10 raised to minus 3 into 13.6 into 10 raised to 3 into 9.8. 10 raised to 3, 10 raised to minus 3 gets cancelled. 13.6 into 9.8 when done you will getting you will be getting 133.8 newton per meter square it is a unit of pressure is actually the SI unit is pascal so in pascals is equal to newton per meter square this is 133.28 pascals this is how you can convert 1 millimeters of mercury into pascals Question 5 of exercise 4b, assuming the density of air to be 1.295 kilogram per meter cube, find the following barometric height in millimeters of mercury at a height of 107 meters above the sea level. Take density of mercury equal to 13.6 into 10 raised to 3 kilogram per meter cube. So here the pressure at the height minus pressure at sea level will be equal to the density of air into the height into acceleration due to gravity g. So here we have we have the mercury as the liquid. So density of mercury into acceleration due to gravity into the final height hf minus density of mercury acceleration due to gravity initial height hi will be equal to density of air into height into acceleration due to gravity. You can remove g from all this. Okay. Then you are having density of mercury into the change in height what is the rise okay change in height is equal to density of air into height h which is given to be 107 meters we have to find delta h delta h will be equal to density of air into h divided by density of mercury okay that is equal to here we are having density of air given to be 1.295 kilogram per meter cube into the height 107 above the sea level divided by the density of mercury which is 13.6 into 10 raised to 3 kilogram per meter cube. So when you calculate you will be getting this value to be equal to 0.01 meters of mercury. So, we need the answer in millimeters of mercury. 1 meter is equal to 1000 millimeters. So, here we are having 0 0.01 meters that is 0 0.01 into 1000 millimeters which is equal to moving 3 decimal places you get 10 millimeters of mercury. So, the answer is 10 millimeters of mercury. Okay, 10 millimeters of mercury is the answer. That's all for today. In today's class, we have discussed about atmospheric pressure, how to measure atmospheric pressure, what are the different types of barometers, the consequences of variation in altitudes and also solve many questions from exercise 4b. Hope you all enjoyed the session. I'll be back in the next session. Until then, stay tuned to Learn Hub. Learn Hub free hai par best hai.